user. And uh, today I want to talk about um, the Rigel project. It's a Rigel, whatever you want to call it. It's um, it's a known project. Um, so it's a open source UPnP server. Um, does anyone have a smart TV or internet connected Blu-ray player? You watch of Samsung? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry, that's kind of a slow one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Rogel is uh, an open source UPnP server for sharing media. Straight from the man page. Um, so yeah, as we can see, it's uh, it's actually a, an open source media server, and it can render media. I think you can um, like uh, plug in using GStreamer two to even transcode on the fly. But um, for those of you who are familiar with Win Windows Media Center, it's the same sort of deal. How you can share your media on your local area network. So you might have. Uh, in your home directory, you've got videos and uh, whatnot. You can share that on the LAN, okay? And um, watch it on your TV, uh, whatever, or your tablet. Uh, yeah, so Rigel is DL DLNA compliant. And so whenever you see the DLNA symbol, Rigel should be interoperable with uh, those uh, devices. Yeah, that's the symbol for DLNA. Um, yeah, uh, and UPnP. So DLNA is just a standards organization. They're a body that um, ensure compliance and interoperability between different vendors. You know, so devices that are adhere to standards. And essentially, it's um, DLNA is um, yeah standards for UPnP which is a, uh, you know, universal plug and play. Um, so universal plug and play is, um, it's, it's a protocol that uses HTTP over UDP, like uh, multicast, um, you know, to discover clients on the local area network and, uh, SOAP, you know, simple object access protocol, which is it's like a RESTful API using XML. Okay, and uh, yeah, send requests in HTTP headers using XML, you know, the XML format, but yeah. Um, also SSDP, which is a simple service discovery protocol that, that you know, discovers devices on the local area network. So when you turn your TV on, and um, I don't know I've got a Samsung smart TV, uh, you can see, uh, like, for me, it'll be Justin at local host or whatever you call your computer. You'll see it as an option, and then you can um, open up files, pictures, and, and different types of media. Uh, yeah, so it discovers uh, devices on the local area network using, uh, I believe it's multicast, and uh, yeah. DLNA also, there, there are a, a few other um, digital media formats that the, you know, for compliance that they must adhere to. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. This is a bit of a, a rush at the last minute, but um, yeah, to install it, I, I've, uh, I use it on, um, you know, Debian distros, like personally, I use it on Ubuntu 16.04. I know it's on all, uh, on 14.04, it's available too. Um, it's as simple as, uh, you know, sudo apt-get install uh, Rigel. But yeah, and that'll just install. And then one of the, so basically how it works, Rigel is, so it shares your folders, right? You know, in your home directory, you've got videos, documents, all that kind of stuff, you know. Well, you know, from the Etsy skill director or whatever. But yeah, uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu is so 
the, this is sort of like a, an extra tool. It's called Rajo Preferences. You know, so you do app get install Rajo Preferences, which is a, a GUI interface to select or deselect what um, folders you you would like to share. So you can see here, I've got an external USB drive. You know, that's been automatically passed. You know, on the in the media directory, I got torrents to uh, yeah, just this different stuff and uh, pictures, videos, and music. And it, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, it passes, you know, the metadata, and um, yeah, all all sorts of uh, file extensions, MKV, MP4, all that stuff. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, so that's the GUI interface to select uh, which um, directory directories you would like to share. Okay, but if you want to. You know, that's just a, a front end for th this is how Rigel, you know, selects uh, which directories to share, you know, so for the like GNOME, the desktop, uh, you know, your display manager has got the, uh, there's certain like, sort of like environment variables, you know, it's, it's in the, in your home directory, you've got the dot config, then the users, user dash does dot conf, sometimes it's called something similar to that you can man k for you know user dash those and you'll see uh that that's actually cutting the that file so you see xdj these are like environment variable sort of things so which directories will be passed with which with which label so see uh i've got downloads i've got a public folder music pictures and uh, on your smart TV or smart connected device, you'll see it as an option. So um, yeah, you'll be able to traverse the directory and um, select which media you would like to watch. Okay. Yeah. So that's doing it manually. You can do that. There is also a like a you can do a command line. I forgot. It's, it's called like update dash user does, and it'll update these automatically, so you don't have to. Uh, manually um you know uh make adjustments to the user does dot conf file okay so that's um yeah you have to man k for that too um so clients that are are available the big one is cody i don't know if much of you are familiar with it but that's that's the bomb you know what i mean that's that's uh you that's a upmp i think it could be a user server too but uh cody yeah it's open source so uh cody k-o-d-i xbmc xbmc yeah so it's the, it's the new uh version of xbmc which um it's fantastic you know um sorry i forgot to mention that uh Rigel has uh, supports. Um, it's, it's 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 a modular sort of uh, it's modular software. You can plug in to there's lots of plugins to interfaces with like JStreamer. Um, what else? Uh, Media Tech. Yeah, but you see it on uh, the man page if you do man Rigel. Okay. Um, yeah, it's got a pretty um, comprehensive uh, Rigel.com file. You can, it's got a global one in Etsy Rigel.com for each user can uh, have their own profile sort of in that home doc config uh, slash Rigel.com directory, you know, depending on what user, you know, um, starts the daemon. Um, you can, yeah, it'll pass what's in their directory sort of thing. Um, I forgot, yeah, just to start it, so it runs as a daemon. There is output that you might want to redirect to dev null. Um, but, yeah, you can you can probably create a init script or systemd script to initialize it, you know, on um, when you're, sorry, pardon me. Goodness. 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, Rigel, the, you, you just type Rigel, and then you could append an ampersand on it so it runs in the background because there will be output, lots of output, or you can send it to dev null. But, um, yeah, you could write a, uh, a sysv script, you know, init script, or you could a systemd script. It's just only one binary to execute, so there's one command. Um, there, the only, there's only one... I mean, there, there are a few options. You, again, check out the man base. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, I to, just check out the man page. But one notable uh, flag is the dash R, which um, say if you've uh, reconfigured which directories it's going to pass, um, you do Rigel dash R and it'll replace. It's akin to stopping and starting the daemon. So. That's one handy one. Um, other than that, it's pretty standard. Or you can, you know, select which uh, configuration uh, file .conf, .conf file to use. Um, yeah. So yeah. So back to clients. Uh, so any client that uh, that uses UPMP, there's a few out there. You know, there's a few alternatives to Rigel too. You know, Rigel is the one that I've I've had a lot of success. But you know, I think there's even a UPnP D as in Damon. But yeah, Cody's the the client that I use. But I think even your GNOME videos can even uh, it's got a plugin you can just um, to you know use UPnP. But Cody, or you can app cache search UPnP and grab client. You know, and uh, yeah, there's a page full of clients. Oh, sorry. Now, let's see if I've got another slide. I'm not sure if I do. No. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? So, how does the media, the smart TV, find mm -hmm. the DLNA server? If, the DLNA, if Rigel's running mm -hmm. and you go to your TV, it just automatically finds it? Yeah. So, actually, that reminds me about another topic, but I'll answer that question quickly. So, how uh rigel discovers hosts on the local network or upmp clients uh yeah <clears throat> yeah so um it's I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept of multicast they sort of subscribe to a, a multicast address yeah. and then the server would like advertise it actually that's good that you mentioned that because yeah so rigel well, in particular, more broadly, uh, UPMP is only for uh, consumer, you know, um, I mean, like, you know, your home uh, home networks is definitely not good for enterprise. It's very chatty. Okay, so each uh, UPMP server and client's going to broadcast, um, you know, multicast messages. And, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of overhead, you know. And, um, yeah, so it's for your home network. A little land, you know, you're not going to use it uh, at a conference or nothing, you know. Um, and it reminded me, um, UPMP, uh, there's definitely uh, a lot of security implications if, uh, you know, it's running on your local area network. UPMP is notorious, you know, for having uh, vulnerabilities. I think 2.5% uh, of um, the zero day uh vulnerabilities were you uh, you know involved upmp uh, that was one year a year or two ago but yeah obviously you have to keep it on your local area network you know it only you can, in rigel.conf you can um uh i'm pretty sure it's only your local network you know i don't think you can uh open it to the wan or anything but yeah it, you know it broadcasts obviously Broadcast only goes to your local area network and um, beware of security, you know, because they can read, read, write. They could, uh, they can get it to <laughs> cat your Etsy password or, you know, Etsy shadow, anything that, yeah, you got to have a secure network, which, yeah, I think uh, just be aware of that, you know, the security implications with every app. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, yeah. Well, you can you can sort of manipulate it to 
uh, I know that one of the vulnerabilities that existed was um, you could send sort of a, a request using uh, uh, path expansion with Bash. So you can send a lot of wildcards and uh, it'll expand to Etsy password sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's vulnerabilities, you know. You know, it's uh, nothing new. Uh, but yeah, uh, something that you, uh, a decision that you ha you'll have to make with yourself, you know, about whether you want to watch uh, movies on your laptop or your TV and you've got to take security into considerations, you know, and uh, yeah, but I use it. I haven't been stung yet, but who knows? Probably got some malware. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's all right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, just secure your network. You sort that firewall out and uh, don't let the baddies in and uh, you'll be all right, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, well, it can. It does actually pass documents, so it could pass as a plain text file, definitely. And it does render, you know, you can pass uh, like shared documents. Uh, I'm not sure if you, sorry. Um, let's see here. Wait, wait, yeah. You see, uh, oh, you can share documents, but let, let me look in. Uh, you see, it's got the standard documents directory. It does pass text and PDFs. Oh. Yeah. You can share photos, text, or oh, documents, videos, music, anything, media, you know? So, yeah, we can move on to questions now. Gentlemen. Huh? If they're on your local network. If they're on your wireless, of course. Why would you want to stop your neighbors from watching your videos? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, obviously. Yeah. So the question was, uh, can the neighbors or someone else uh, watch, uh, watch your media? That comes down to they have to be on the local area network. So they have to have the same network address. Yeah. So if they're on your network, yeah, I've got, yeah, then they definitely could. But yeah, I mean, they, they, they have to get, you know, the password or plug into an ethernet port. I mean, it's not easy to get on someone's network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, any, any, any client that's on the same, like 192.168.0. whatever, yeah, whatever the subnet mask is, will be able to, if they're on the, you know, they subscribe to the multicast address, they can, um, yeah, so get, get, watch it. Just it, it does. Where, see, that DLNA, yeah. We'll be able to see that and you'll be able to browse the directories. It's, well, I don't think it actually uh, broadcast, yeah. So it doesn't actually broadcast the media. So it broadcasts, uh, I'm, a, I'm a UPMP server, I'm a, you know, any clients out there? And then clients will receive it, yeah. And then, uh, you know, then that's when they do the requests over SOAP, you know, um, do the HTTP headers with XML. But that's why it's chatty, you know? Yeah, it uses XML. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry? In your config file, mm -hmm. say different hubs. So which mm -hmm. one is actually you're trying to share? Yeah, any of these, so basically for the, um, it's like the X display, you know, it's like uh, whatever Windows uh, manager you have. You know, that usually, I know for Ubuntu, you know, when you just create a new user or if you're the only user, you know, straight away, you know, there's got the, the skeleton, the hexascale directory, and you know, any, any files in that directory is uh, automatically created when you make the user. So, yeah, for standard users on Ubuntu, or most of in this row, it has uh, a download, a desktop directory, a download directory, temp, no, 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 but uh, documents directory, music and pictures. And they're predefined. So what this allows you to do is if you don't want to share, if you don't want your documents to be, you know, home slash documents, you can make them like home uh, slash, you know, root documents, whatever. You, this allows you to select him. <laughs> Um, yeah, this allows you to select which directories you will not share. So, yeah. the temp, uh, say for instance, the download directory, mm -hmm. is that going to be shared by Rigel as being the download media? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I think. Uh, each one of these is going to be. 
I think I added that. that I don't think that's standard. Eh? I think that's mine. Okay. So are those variables variables no. that Rigel defined, or is that nah? That, that's, that's for a gnome. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's so these are the yeah. gnome default. Yeah, that's right. And Rigel by default. Yes. Share exactly. In the yeah. So default. you know when you when you you know when you have a automatically when you create a user on what Ubuntu. It has like a video directory, downloads directory, and documents. Right. See, that's what Rigel uses to pass. Right. Yeah. So pretty much any 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 directory defined in your desktop as being, you know, this is my downloads directory, yeah. this is my documents directory. Rigel is automatically going to. That's right. Share that by default, and that's determined in the Rigel.conf. If you want Rigel to share a particular directory, mm -hmm. you want to limit that and give it a different exactly. set of variables. Yeah. Well, it it it, it passes. So your user does .conf by default, you know, which is in your .config in your home directory. But in Rigel.conf, you can even further, you know, give a fine-grained uh, uh, um, policy sort of thing to, you know, administer security if you want. Yeah, it's it's, it's quite feature, you know, feature rich. Yeah, yeah. By default, by, by default, it shares the GNOME, uh, you know, GNOME defined uh, standard directories. For and yeah, just and Roger by default them. we'll share them. Yeah, that's right. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Any? No? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you could probably use TCP wrappers. I mean, yeah. There's in the in the doc conf. You know, it's. It was, oh, I haven't got it here. But um, so Rigel's meant to be more of a uh, ad hoc sort of tool, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say ad hoc. It's, it's, it's like as in ad hoc, as in um, like an app you click on to. Yeah, like like um, right now, I want to share my media. Yeah. So I run the command. I share my media when I'm done. Shut the thing down. It on. can be. It can be. I mean, it's a simple binary to start. It's just Rigel with the flags, whatever flags you want. But I know on Ubuntu 16.04, it does start automatically. You know, um, it's, it's like a, one of the automatic startup applications, like a daemon, yeah? It, and it runs as a daemon too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the daemon would, uh, passes, you know, rigel.conf, which passes user does.conf. Yeah. Anyway, and, and also rigel.conf, you can. Uh, I believe you know there's a policy you can administer for which networks. I think you can even blacklist clients. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, just specify which networks and that. Any other questions? Any anyone else curious about uh, Rajo? It's a known project. You can contribute. No. Thank you very much, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, like I said, we'd normally go to the pub after this. Uh, not